What's up, everybody? Matt Modai here with my pumped up NFL player props for this weekend. We're talking NFL week 13. All I mean by pumped up props is that I find player props that I like. Instead of taking them at the main line, I take them at a pumped up number for juicier odds for a juicier payout. It's been phenomenal. Now, Thursday Night Football, to do a recap, was the worst beat that I've had of the year on these pumped up props. I had CD Lamb 100 plus receiving yards. That cashed. Let's go. That's great. I also had Dak Prescott 200. I also had Dak Prescott 300 plus passing yards. And guess how many passing yards he ended up with? That's right. 299. That includes having about 100 yards worth of pass interference penalties called against him. If we had gotten both of those to cash, we would have swept the slate literally one yard short on Dak Prescott 300 plus passing yards. So much pain, but that's okay. At least we got CD Lamb. We end the day up 0.3 units, not breaking the bank, but still profit. That brings our total profit from week seven on because that is when I started doing the pumped up props to 22.13 units of profit with an ROI of 16.81%. That Dak Prescott loss hurts a lot. Luckily, we've had a ton of success doing this, so we are able to withstand that still have a profitable day, still be very much in the green overall. Would appreciate it if you are not already, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and then make sure to like this video and uh, comment as well. And let's get into it. So play number one of these pumped up props is in the uh, 49ers versus Eagles game. We're taking Brock Purdy, 300 plus passing yards, plus 295 odds at DraftKings. And I will say every single play is going to be on DraftKings. So go ahead and log in and get comfy there. So I know that I went with Purdy last week. He didn't come through for us, but I love this one a lot. I think Brock Purdy could have a really, really good game in this one. On the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the entire season, the Eagles allow 255 passing yards per game. That is the fourth most in the NFL. They also average the most passing attempts against at 41.45. It's because they're awesome against the run and they're less than awesome against the pass. So teams just don't even bother running and pass on them a ton. But with that said, it has been even worse if you look at the more recent sample size for the Eagles. So as opposed to the entire year, let's look at the past month. In the past month, they are third in terms of passing yards allowed, all the way up at 296.67. They are essentially allowing, for the past month, every quarterback that's played them go over 300 passing yards. And then they have by far on average, the most passing attempts against at 46. The next closest team is all the way down to 38 and a half. So yeah, teams are having, especially quarterbacks, a lot of success against the Eagles. And just look at these recent performances. Josh Allen threw for 339. Dak Prescott threw, 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 excuse me, threw for 374. Sam Howell almost threw for 400 yards against the Eagles. He threw for 397. They get eaten alive in the passing game, and the 49ers know that. I know in, on average, in general, the 49ers love to run the ball, but in this game, the biggest advantage that the 49ers are going to have is through the air, and I think that they are smart enough to take advantage of that. Purdy's been great this year. Everybody, everybody knows that. He's thrown for 300 or more yards in three games so far, and then in another game, he had 296, so right around there. Last week, he only had 209, but that was a complete shellacking of the Seahawks. I do not expect the game against the Eagles to go this way. I think even if the 49ers win, I think it'll be close and it'll be competitive. And for what it's worth, props.cash projects Brock Purdy to have an obscene 380 passing yards. So if you really wanted to pump him up till I think the highest books probably go is 350, 400 for Purdy. You could do that for pretty juicy odds. Obviously, we're just going to track whether he gets to 300 or not. But if you wanted to do up to 400, up to 380, you could as our first play. Next up, we're sticking in the same game, 49ers, Eagles. Uh, George Kittle, 70 plus receiving yards, plus 270 odds at DraftKings. So the same game, this time relying on Kittle to receive some of those yards that we're projecting Purdy to pass for. And I will say I was heavily debating going with Brandon Ayuk or George Kittle. Obviously, I ended up settling on George Kittle. The reasoning why, because the 49ers, again, the biggest advantage they have is going to be through the air. 
the biggest advantage that they're going to have through the air is specifically up the middle of the field, specifically targeting the Eagles linebackers. The Eagles linebackers are by far their worst part of the defense. And not only that, but they're banged up. Two of their top three linebackers are going to be out in this game, including their number one linebacker, Zach Cunningham, who's been their best linebacker all year. He hurt his hammy last week. He's going to be out. Teams, as I mentioned, are having a ton of success throwing against the Eagles. In this game, I'm projecting that to be up the middle of the field to George Kittle. Now, despite the fact that if you look at the recent output against the Eagles, it's not incredible if you just look at tight ends against the Eagles. Even with that in mind, DVOA still has the Eagles as the literal worst defense in the NFL at covering the tight end. Last week, the Bills had success in the first half targeting Dalton Kincaid. For whatever reason, they went away from it in the second half. But prior to that, we saw uh, Ferguson for the Cowboys put up 91 receiving yards against them. And after a slow start to the year, Kittle has really come on recently. And what really makes me feel comfortable about this play is Kittle has come on even in games in which Devo has returned from injury. So that's very promising to see. In the past, you'd only, you'd only want to target Kittle in games that either Debo or Ayuk had missed. That hasn't been the case in the small sample size this year. Overall, Kittle has cleared 70 plus receiving yards in only one of his first six and his first six games played. Since then, he hit it in four straight before missing it last week. Again, that was a down game for pretty much every um, 49ers receiver in terms of just their receiving yards output. And what I like is in two of the games that Debo has returned from injury, Kittle put up 116 in 89 receiving yards. So I have a lot of confidence that Kittle will be able to get us to 70 in this one as our second play. Next up, Cardinals versus Steelers. Najee Harris, 90 plus rushing yards, plus 350 odds at DraftKings. Now heading into this week, I knew I wanted to target one of the Steelers running backs because of the matchup, which we'll get into. And I again, I had a hard time deciding between Najee and Jalen Warren. But the reason why I decided on Najee is because on average, he still gets more carries than Jalen Warren. And in this game in which the Steelers should be leading through the majority of the game, they're probably going to lean on Najee more than Jalen Warren because Warren is a little bit more of the change of pace receiving yards back. Last week was the Steelers' first game without Matt Canada. Najee Harris rushed for 50, uh, excuse me for 99 yards on 15 carries. He had two separate 20 plus yards, uh, 20 plus yard runs in this one. He, along with Kittle, had a horrible start to the year. Najee's also been coming on recently. He's had very good games three of the past four weeks after really struggling in the first six. And now he's blessed to go up against the premier matchup for opposing running backs. Over the past month, the Arizona Cardinals are allowing 142 rushing yards per game. That is the most in the NFL. And just look at what recent running backs have done against them. Last week, Kyron Williams rushed for 143 yards. The week before that, Devin Singletary rushed for 112 yards. The week before that, Bijan Robinson rushed for 95 yards. It is just disgusting what running backs are doing to Arizona. That should continue with uh, Najee in this one, hopefully cashing plus 350 for us. Next up, fourth and final pick of the slate, David Montgomery. This is in the uh, Lions versus Saints game. David Montgomery, 100 plus rushing yards, plus 360 odds at DraftKings. Now the Saints aren't as bad as the Cardinals, but they are still a defense that you want to target for opposing running backs, which is why we're going after David Montgomery. The Saints, again, they're not the Cardinals. They're still very bad, especially recently. Over the past month, the Saints are allowing 123 and a, and a third, 123 essentially rushing yards per game. That is the fourth most in the NFL in that span. And what I love about David Montgomery is he just gets consistent work. If you take out the game in which he left early due to an injury, he's had at least 12 carries in every single game that he's played. Again, the one game he was hurt, he only played 18 snaps. Again, obviously injuries happen. You can't predict that. But with that game taken out, he on average has 18 rush attempts per game. He had over 30 rush attempts once. He went over 20 rush attempts twice. And in general, he's had 15 plus rushing attempts in five of the seven games that he's played when healthy. Now, Jared Goff has been struggling mightily recently. He's been very much not good. So the guess here is that the Lions, in order to kind of get back to their winning ways, to their playing better football ways, lean heavily on the ground game, give David Montgomery 20 plus carries in this one. They have not been shy to give him a ton of work. So that I don't think that's an obscene number. And I also expect the Lions to be winning 
the majority of this game as well. Not only do the Saints, they just simply stink, but they're also so banged up. I just can't see the Saints having success on offense. So even if it's a slog for the Lions, I think it could be a slog in which they feed David Montgomery a ton. Kind of similar logic for why I chose Najee over Jalen Warren, because I think that the Lions are going to be winning. I think they're going to give a lot more work to David Montgomery as he is the ground and pound, the pound the rock type of running back, where Gibbs is a little bit more of the scat back passing back change of pace. So I love David Montgomery in this one, hopefully cashing our fourth and final pick of this evening. And that's all I got. Four pumped up player props for you guys to lock in for NFL Sunday. If we can get one of the last two to cash, we will at least be profitable. If we can get a, any combination of two, we will be very profitable. Obviously, we're hoping to hit all four, but I appreciate everybody for watching. Make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have a good one.